What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. I hope you're all doing very well. I want to do a little update to the uh, healing uh, build, the passive healing build in Raid. In particular in Raid, I've done another uh, couple of Raid fights with this passive healing build. And mostly what I'm talking about when I say passive is not including Cloud Burst. Um, that's the most important component to this. And also taking talents like Primal Tidal Core instead of high tide so we're focusing a little less on chain heal a little more on the other pieces also things like earth living weapon we'll get to that in a second but i did another fight a heroic naimu I actually did a uh, three different raid fights last night we did like uh council naimu and before that i think i did one as well what did i do here let me look really quickly um we had council naimu we had farak afterwards so i'm going to show you the naimu fight and i want to again try to show you how the build has like evolved a little bit from my very first video. I I'm adding a very key component to this that I'm emphasizing more than I did before, which is going to be Unleash Life into Wellspring. We'll talk about that in a second. That's the main thing I want to emphasize. But I also just want to talk about how um, this fight, you know, how you can do really well on a shaman, on as a resto shaman, without having to lean into things like Cloud Burst, without having to do a chain heal focused build, chain heal only. This build does include some chain heal stuff. It will, I promise you. But it, it doesn't it doesn't have you just sitting there casting chain heal all the time. That's not what you're doing. Um, you're putting down a lot of other passive healing that is going to help you. And really, I think in, in particular, as I've said before, take the burden off of you mentally to not have to track your cloud burst, and not have to make sure that you're maximizing, min-maxing the cloud burst to the biggest degree. Um, it's nice to not have to do that. It's just nice to just sort of react to the healing that's going on around you or the damage that's coming in around you. It's nice to just be able to kind of do that. So here's what the talent tree looks like. This is the general tree. Important notes here, of course, big cooldowns, Ancestral Guidance, Healing uh, Tide Totem, Next big cooldown. And Ascendance is a huge cooldown. And now we have Mana Tide Totem with Spirit Walker's title Totem being that fourth major cooldown that we have. This is a really, really big deal. Um, Spirit Link, of course, being the fifth one. I don't want to forget about Spirit Link. Uh, but Spirit Walker's title Totem is huge. This allows you to just cast Chain Heal over and over again. You get about seven to eight Chain Heals in that window. And not only are you chain healing everybody for basically free, but you're adding tidal reservoirs, which is that um, tier set bonus that we have right now as well, right? So very, very good there. The big piece I do want to talk about, though, is, of course, this new Unleashed Life into Wellspring. What am I talking about? Well, when you press Unleashed Life and then you press Wellspring, look at the bottom of this tooltip here. 40% of the overhealing done is converted into an absorb effect. I wanted to try and test this and see how how good did this feel? How good did it feel? And overall, I did 200k HPS on this fight. Now, you know, it, 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 it might just depend on the healing composition. I, I think I just played pretty well, but it really this this is these numbers are always going to change from fight to fight. I just happened to have a really good fight here, and um, the the numbers were there. I happened to be timing my spells. I think probably at the right time. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But here's what the breakdown is: Riptide Chain Heal is very high. It's very high. It's always going to be high because of that Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem cooldown that we have, right? Get that you just you just cast them over and over and over again. So you're going to get a ton of value there if you're using it at the right time. You can see I only overhealed 13% on Chain Heal. That is massive. That lets you know if you get a low amount of overhealing on Chain Heal, it means that you're casting it at the right time. That's that's a good way to measure for yourself how well am I am I using this ability now. Chain Heal is a smart heal. It's going to do a lot of the work for you, but you still need to cast it at a time when there's actually damage going out. So just keep that in mind. Okay, Healing Stream Totem, Earthen Wall, huge. It never overheals, which is why it's such a good ability in Raid. It blocks. It's also uncapped healing, by the way. Excuse me. A lot of healing is capped. This is uncapped healing. As long as you put this on the ground and there's... As many people as possible can be inside of Earthen Wall. They will all take reduced damage. So it's it's sort of uncapped healing, which is super cool. Earth Living Weapon, very good. And again, people really like to dump on Earth Living Weapon and say it's not a good idea. People are like, you should never ever take these two talents improved Earth Living Weapon. It's uh, it's a load of baloney, guys. This thing's good. Okay, it only overhealed by twenty percent. That's not that bad. That's not a bad amount of overhealing at all. That means it was I was getting a lot of value out of Earth Living Weapon. So. 
I tr trust me, this thing is good. Uh, take it. You'll get a lot of good passive healing out of it. My leech was pretty crazy. I have a lot of leech on this character. There's AG. Here's Wellspring. 5%. It did overheal quite a bit, but that's okay because we're taking the talent, right, with um, Unleash Life. That means that the overhealing will be converted into a shield. So our Wellspring is 5% here. If we go down to Unleash Life right here, you can see it adds an additional 2.3%. Just the Wellspring. Oh, no, sorry. Not the Wellspring. It adds an additional 1% more healing from the Unleashed Life. So it's not amazing. The overhealing shield was only 600k. But again, I've only tried this once. I'm probably not min-maxing it as best I could. That number could be higher. But it's not amazing. I will admit to you, this is not incredible. It's only 1% more healing. But that means that instead of doing 5.1%, we actually did 6%. And remember, shields are almost always efficient, right? They never overheal. You can see right here, 0% overhealing on this 600K. So I like this little talent. I like the addition of it. I mean, Unleash Life, or sorry, Wellspring itself is actually just a good talent to have in Raid. It's just a good talent to have in Raid. And then instead of the overhealing all going to waste, we're now banking that into shields. And I think that's kind of good. Even though it only did 1% of my healing on this particular pull, I think it could be better. So I like the idea of it. And again, you don't always have to use Unleashed Life on Wellspring. You could use it on Chain Heal to do 15% more, right? Inside of your um, Spirit Walker's title, your, wind speak, your Wave Speaker's Blessing. Is it waves, Spirit Walker's title totem. Did it. There we go. Wave Speaker's Blessing is over here, right? Yeah. Inside this cooldown, you know, you could press it and it's going to give you a lot of value. So that's the breakdown of the talents for the most part. Let's look at the fight. I think that's my cousin. Again, this is uh, Naimu. Yeah. And um, remember, the, the big problem, the big priority on this fight is to soak the seeds. Hold on, let me just make sure this is 1080p. Is it? Uh, okay. I don't know why the video quality can't be higher. Anyway. We got to soak seeds. So primarily my job here is to soak seeds. Now, I've done this fight a lot on my monk, so I'm aware of what's coming up next. A bunch of damage comes out right here. When these guys get circles, there's a lot of damage going out on the raid for whatever reason. It just ends up adding a lot of damage because they're running over top of lines. They're taking a dot from the circle. So you need to blow a cooldown here. Very, very important. Hold on. Let me just get this. There we go. Okay. So I blow um, my Spearwalker's Tidal Totem here. To do big chain heal healing, you can see I'm just doing... I get about six or seven of them in there during the cooldown, and that is a lot of healing right off the bat. And there's a bunch of Tidal Reservoirs. we got one, two, three, four. Uh, we had a fifth one there. Five down here. Five Tidal Reservoirs just out, mostly because I do get stunned by the lines because I wasn't paying attention. I will fix that later. Don't worry. Don't get stunned by those lines. It's kind of tough when you're healing because you're looking at the raid frames, and you're not looking at your screen as much. So that can be a little bit difficult. Doing some triage healing here. We have um, healing stream totems I'm going to put down in a second here to keep, keep everybody going. This fight, really, I don't have any healing stream totems down right now, so that's actually a huge fail. But I have also already tried to do the Wellspring, the Unleash Life Wellspring combo. Here it comes again. I've just pressed Unleash Life, and I'm pressing Wellspring right now. So there's a big wave that's going to come out. Now, there's a line coming at me. i got to watch out. There's my Wellspring, and look, I dodged the lines here. And the Wellspring goes out and heals a bunch of people and then puts those shields on them as well, which is going to give you even more healing, which is super, super cool. Really love that. Now we're off to the ad phase. I actually think I ran to the wrong side, but then I realized later that we have five healers. So right now there's three of us on this side and two people on the other side. And I was like, I'm going to go help the other side because I thought we were two and two, but we were actually three and two. So actually a big mistake for me but you can see you can run across some of these lines and it's not a big deal yes i've taken a few stacks there but it's okay not the end of the world here's where you need the big burst healing we lose some people already uh they're helping yeah they had lopsided dps so they're helping the other side i'm pumping as much as i can possibly pump right now because people are gonna die right now this is just this is such a bad moment here so then i put earth and wall totem down and I get my healing stream totem down, and then I'm doing spirit link. This is obviously the the premier time to do spirit link because um, everybody's grouped up. And then we can run out. There's a wellspring. Look at that wellspring go through everybody right there. Boom. Look at look. Watch my healing go up with wellspring. I want. I just want to highlight how good wellspring is. My healing right now, before I cast wellspring, right, I'm at 180k per second. Okay, watch this 180k number. It's gonna go way up here. 180k, it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
Oh, up to five. Yeah, it's just like a lot of healing right there from one spell. So I do think Wellspring is totally worth taking. It's basically like casting. It's the mana equivalent of casting one chain heal, but you get to heal everybody. It hits everybody and then gives them this extra shield if you're using Unleashed Life. So, um, yeah, I love that combo. I really here, here comes again. Another Wellspring combo. I also have uh, my healing tide totem is down right now because, again, this moment right here when everybody, when two people get those green circles and they have to take it out of the group, there's a lot of damage going off. And you can see there's a bunch of flowers that we need to soak. I'm doing my best to soak them. I probably could have been soaking a little bit better. Now we're dodging lines. Look at how close I got to that line. That was actually crazy. Make sure you dodge these lines. Your um, Spirit Walker's Grace is your friend. It is a very, very good ability on this fight because you can run around and dodge lines while you are casting spells. Now we're up to 195k HPS. <clears throat> Just pumping here. And I think, I, again, I want to highlight for a fight like this, this passive healing style is really good, right? I've got Earthen Wall Totem down. Riptides are all over the place. I've got my Wellspring going on, putting on that extra shield to everybody. Um, healing Rain is on the ground. We've got the Tidal Reservoir passive, and Healing Stream Totems are going on. So all this passive healing is helping. You can see everybody's taking ticking damage the entire time during this fight. I don't know how I didn't die here. Oh, I popped, I popped a DR. I ran into this bubble, so I just pop a DR so I can live. I popped my wall. In order to live there that was really really close i should have died there but um just got lucky with the timing of my wall basically I, I don't know who put this flower here but it doesn't matter there's a wellspring into the group i'm doing my best to keep everybody alive here at this point i'm getting low on mana but we're almost near the end of the fight so it's it's not the end of the world i did just use uh my mana tide totem that was uh, about uh, 30 seconds ago here's the big i don't really have any cooldowns here except for earthen wall and wellspring which I will do here. There's a Wellspring. Hits everybody. Does a lot of healing. We're at 205k right now. So I'm running out of mana, but that's okay. I thought I had a mana pot. I don't have any. That's what I was checking my inventory for. Unfortunate there. I do need to get mana pots for raid. Even for Mythic Plus, actually, mana pot would be really good. I'm checking again. Look at this. I write mana. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have, the, uh, I have this one where I can sit. Potion of Frozen Focus. So right now, I literally just sit and drink for a second. I get about half the channel through, and then I'm like, okay, that's going to have to do because I need to soak flowers. I need to help my group. Here comes an Unleash Life plus a um, Wellspring in a second here. There's Unleash Life. Here's Wellspring. Watch my numbers once again. Here comes the waves going out right there. We're doing 191K, and it goes boom, boom. It'll go up to, uh, you can just see the 100, the, the in the millions, it goes up quite a bit. I have to take this uh, circle. I think because there's a lot of range people dead, typically healers don't have to take these out. Then we're dodging lines on the way back in. And then people are really dying because flowers aren't being soaked. So this is where we just blast every cooldown we have left. I'm, I popped Ascendance right there. I don't really have any mana left to do Chain Heal. So I can do, I think, a, a Wellspring here. I'm mostly casting my efficient healing spells as much as I can. There's a Wellspring. I think I get stunned right here, which is unfortunate. But the fight's over. So there you go. A little messy by the end. But you can see that's kind of how that fight goes. I just really wanted to highlight for this build, this new edition of uh, Unleashed Life plus Wellspring. I want to do some more testing on it, but I think Wellspring on its own is a good enough button to take. It is worthy enough because, again, it only costs 10,000 mana. My Chain Heal costs 14,000 mana. Chain Heal does 53,000, and it can bounce about uh, three times. You can make it four times with Unleashed Life. Obviously, if you spec into it, you could get an additional bounce right here and get five times. So let's call it um, 50, 150, Let's call it like a 250k to 300k heal, right? If I press Wellspring once and it hits all 20 people, that's now 25,000. Wait, what is it? 20... 25,000 times 20, it ends up being a 500k heal, right? Add in the add in the correct numbers, right? 25,000 times 20 people, that ends up being 500k. So uh, you can see, I think there's really good value in, in Wellspring. Even if you only had 18 people in the raid, I'm not even sure how many we had that night. That's still going to be 450,000 basically, right? So instead of it only being a 250 to 300,000 heal on Chain Heal, Obviously, Chain Heal you can spam. I understand that. But mana efficiency-wise, I'm just saying, Chain Heal costs more than Wellspring, and Wellspring is going to heal way more 
And Wellspring is going to give you this Unleashed Life shield on top of it, which I think is really cool. So I'm not saying don't ever press Chain Heal. I'm just saying there is value in taking this Wellspring button. I think you can see it reflected in my HPS numbers here. Uh, Wellspring itself doing 5.1%, and then we're getting the extra shield on top. So that's what the breakdown looks like, guys. You can see Riptide, Healing Stream Totem, Earthen Wall, Earth Living. Those are all like passive, right? Chain Heal is not passive, but Riptide and Healing Stream and Earthen Wall and Earth Living, those are all passive. They're so strong on a lot of these raid boss fights. They'll just they'll just pump your team consistently full of healing and keep everybody alive. And then you can you can come swinging in with the big cooldowns in those moments when you need them, when people are really dying. Um, but for the rest of the time, you have this passive stuff going on in the background, just topping people off here and there, right? Really, really cool to see. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the addition of Wellspring. Have you guys tried Wellspring? Have you tried it with Unleashed Life? I think it's a really good little combo, and I like it a lot in Raid. Um, I think it has tremendous value with that overheal shield. As long as you're hitting the majority of your raid with it every time you cast it, there's a lot of value there. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Love you all. I will see you in the next one.